Happy Wednesday. How you doing? Hey, I want to talk to you today about what you should refuse to believe. We're not supposed to believe everything. We don't take everything at face value. We don't believe everything. But there are some things you should believe and some things you should refuse to believe. Let's talk about today the things you should refuse to believe. Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. And the best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart, getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Great things are coming my way. Everything always works out for me. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Pastor Jim is the ultimate pastor. Because... He's available and he gets results, huh? What you should refuse to believe. Call me today if you need to get your prayers answered because we get results. I get prayers answered for people. I get results through the power in the name of Jesus. Just that simple. That power is available to all believers. I just happen to be able to use it. Anybody can use it if they get their faith to that point. And I've been doing this for 30 years. Longer than that, actually. Much longer. And praise God, people are getting blessed. We are working on how to get people to receive from God. We're working on faith. On faith. And actually... As most of you know, I wrote the book on faith. There's other books on faith. Lots of them. But none of them like this. This is an incredible book on faith. This will teach you how to use faith to make things happen. Everything we get from God is a result of somebody's faith. Either yours or somebody else's. But somebody has to be involved who has faith. Otherwise, God does nothing apart from faith. So, we're learning about faith. And there's things we need to believe and things we need to refuse to believe. If you know anybody that's sick or broke, please have them call me. I just, this morning, prayed for a man in the intensive care unit in a hospital in India. Somebody called me. I'm waiting for the report. He'll be fine. We declared that he would live and not die. We just came against that sickness in the name of Jesus. People call me from all over the world. They know who to call when somebody gets sick. Nobody should die of sickness and disease as long as I'm here. And we'll use the power in the name of Jesus. On your behalf. Huh? Glory to God. What you should refuse to believe. Make sure you call me today if you do your offerings and donations today. And a lot of people do them during the week. And when you do, I want to speak God's word for word blessing over you. We don't bless the offerings and pray over the money that comes in that helps us send this message around the world. We bless the people who give it. And that's exactly the way Abraham did it. Melchizedek, the priest, did not pray over Abraham's tithe. He prayed over Abraham and spoke a blessing over him. So that's how we do it. We follow after success. You want to be successful? Do what successful people do. And please share this video. What you should refuse to believe now, we all know that Adam sinned in the garden. When he did, he brought into the world the curse, the curse, which morphed into uh, 400 years, well, actually, about 2,000 years later, it morphed into what they call the curse of the law. And the curse of the law 
is all found in Deuteronomy, but it's all derived from the original curse that came into the world. And the original curse was four parts. Spiritual death for unbelief and for disobeying God. Sickness came into the world. Poverty came into the world. And a hard life came into the world. The exact opposite of what was going on in the Garden of Eden. Because in the Garden of Eden, there was no spiritual death. There was no physical death. Adam and Eve were created to live forever. Now, we don't know how long they were in the garden. We have no idea. They could have been a matter of uh, six months, a couple years. It could have been a thousand years. We don't know how long they were there. But at some point, they disobeyed God. And when they did, sin came into the world. And spiritual death came into the world. And sickness came into the world. And poverty came into the world and a hard life. But Jesus redeemed us from the curse. The Bible tells us the curse of the law. But the curse of the law, which had morphed from the original curse, was really four parts. Every part of the curse falls under those one of those four categories. And Jesus redeemed us from it. He paid the price. See, when sin is involved, there's a price to pay. Jesus paid the price. You don't have to. You don't have to pay that. So, if there's any sin or spiritual death in your life, or sickness, or a poverty, or a hard life, that's called double jeopardy because you're allowing the same thing to come upon you that Jesus paid the price for. He paid for it. Therefore, you should refuse to believe in sickness. Now, I know sickness happens to a lot of people. You should refuse to allow it to be in your body because it's been paid for. You should refuse to live in poverty. You should refuse to live under a hard life. And you should refuse spiritual death by receiving Jesus as your Savior. When you receive Jesus as your Savior, you are refusing spiritual death and being lost forever. And you're, re and you're receiving eternal life. Glory to God. It's all opposites. Everything is opposites. The blessing is the opposite of the curse. Healing is the opposite of sickness. Abundance is the opposite of poverty. And eternal life with Jesus in heaven is the opposite of spiritual death. So we need to refuse those four things. And all that sickness and disease and poverty and lack which is found in Deuteronomy chapter 28, we need to refuse to receive it. We need to refuse evil people in our life. Don't allow evil people to come into your life and, and cause problems with you or your church. A lot of pastors have problems in their church because evil people get in there and they cause problems. I know all about that. I've had that happen. And the reason it happened is because I didn't have enough wisdom to root it out. But now I do. Now I spot them right away. Because God has given me the gift of discernment and wisdom. I can tell when somebody's in our church and, they, and they're there for bad intentions. And people come there for bad intentions. People come there, wonderful acting, wonderful people. But they meant to destroy the church. They meant to change our church from being a word of faith church, a church that believes God and believes in God's goodness and his wonderfulness and his love to something different. I'm not going to do it. I refuse to accept it and I refuse to believe it. I refuse to believe lies. God will show you what the truth is. The Holy Spirit will let you know if it's truth. 
the spirit of wisdom that comes upon people. The definition is found in 1 Kings chapter 3, when Solomon asked God for wisdom. And he says, that I may know good from bad. Wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, when it comes upon you, will cause you to know good from bad. If you can tell the difference between good and bad, you will never make a mistake. I've made so many mistakes in my life because bad people presented themselves as good people and I got deceived. I'll tell you how like it is. I'm honest with people. I've been deceived many, many times, but not no more. Not no more because I've asked God for that spirit of wisdom. So I know good from bad. We have not made a mistake in our lives in the last 10 years, actually 11 years. Mary and I got that spirit of wisdom upon us along with the blessing of God. And we have made all, the, all of our major decisions have been spot on. And because of that, we have come to live in abundance. In wisdom's right hand is long life. In her left hand is riches and honor. God's word is true. I believe every word that's in this book. Exactly the way it's written. And I refuse to believe anything that is contrary to what is in this book. And there's a lot of stuff out there right now that is contrary to that book. And they're trying to present it as mainstream. It's not. They're trying to present it as good. The Bible says that there will come a day when people will say that what is evil is good and what is good is evil. You have to know the difference. You have to know what is good and what is bad. And I absolutely refuse to believe anything that is not good. I refuse to believe anything that is not of God's word. Anything that has to do with sickness or disease or poverty or lack, I absolutely refuse to believe. Learn what you need to refuse to believe. Refuse to believe that sickness has a place in your life. Refuse to believe that you're going to live in poverty. I said before, I said uh, years ago, I said, I will never be satisfied until I am living in the abundance that Jesus came to provide for me. How would you like to stand in front of God during the judgment seat of Christ and he ask you why you didn't receive the abundance that Jesus died to provide for you? Why didn't you receive that? I don't want to have that conversation. It's like God told uh, through the, the, the disciples and through the writers of the Bible, when Jesus said, go out, preach the kingdom and heal the sick. I don't want to have the conversation with God about why you didn't heal the sick. I refuse to believe that God wants anybody to be sick because Jesus healed them all. I refuse to believe it. All I believe is that God wants to heal everybody. That God wants everybody to believe, to live in abundance. And so that's how I live. I believe God's word and I refuse to believe anything else. Call me if you need prayer today. I'm always here for you. God wants you to have a wonderful life. And I am here to use the power in the name of Jesus to make it happen. Share this video with everybody you know. Make sure you call me when you do your offerings and donations because I want to speak God's word for word blessing over you. I am determined you're going to receive God's blessing and receive his healing in their fullness. And I will use the power in the name of Jesus to make it happen for you.